हेलो माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू योर चैनल होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग वेल फ्रॉम टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू स्टार्ट टर्म टू ऑफ क्लास ट्वेल्थ फिजिक्स विद दिस वीडियो आई विल कवर ऑल इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स एंड फॉर्मूलाज ऑफ ऑल चैप्टर ऑफ टर्म टू फिजिक्स एंड लेट एस स्टार्ट फर्स्ट विथ चैप्टर नाइन डैट इज रे ऑप्टिक्स राइट सो इन दिस चैप्टर रे ऑप्टिक्स डिफरेंट टॉपिक्स टू बी कवर्ड आर फर्स्ट what do you mean by refraction of light then law of refraction after that refractive index then total internal refraction refraction through a curved surface then double refraction from a plane surface that is lens maker formula which is very very important for board exam right and then linear magnification for a spherical refracting surface after that refraction through a prism this chapter is, uh, this topic is also very very important last topic of this chapter is optical instrument in this one both microscope and telescope so let us start first with what do you mean by this chapter name ray optics after that refraction of light so ray optics optics is nothing but light and ray optics means light is considered as a ray after this chapter next chapter is wave optics in that one light is considered as wave and in ray optics light is considered as ray for each and every object there is an image now what do you mean two phenom important phenomena takes place one is refraction of light and another one is refraction of light this is not in your syllabus for this year but still you must know about refraction of light laws of reflection so what is this refraction of light the bouncing back of light returning back of light in the same medium suppose this is a reflecting surface from where light reflects this is normal right and this is the incident ray ray which is incident on the reflecting surface for incident ray and after this it bounces back this is called reflected ray the angle maintained normal incident ray is called angle of incidence angle between normal and reflected ray is called angle of reflection so there are two laws of reflection first one is angle of incidence is always equal to angle of reflection at every point on the reflecting surface second one is the incident ray this one is incident ray reflected ray and normal to the reflecting surface at the point of incidence this o is the point of incidence at this point all three lie in the same plane these are two laws of reflection after this there are different types of reflecting surface one is plane mirror then spherical mirrors spherical mirrors are again are of two types one is concave mirror another one is convex mirror you must know about these things always study already study in class 10th right there are some sign conventions for image formation by these mirrors first one is all measurement should be taken from pole of the mirror this one is pole this is center of curvature this one is concave mirror right this is concave mirror and this one is convex mirror what is from the inner surface so always all measurements should be taken from this pole of the mirror all measurements along direction of incident ray is always taken as positive and opposite to the direction of incident ray are taken as negative all measurements for distance above this one is principal axis line passing through center of curvature and pole so above the principal axis all measurements are taken as positive and below the principal axis all measurement are taken as negative for real object u is negative and v is negative for real object and positive for virtual object right then there is one mirror important formula that is mirror formula if v is image distance u is object distance and f is focal length of the mirror right so mirror formula is 1 by v plus 1 by u equal to 1 by f this is very very important these are used when you solve some numericals right and what is the relation between f focal length and radius of curvature f is always equal to r by 2 then magnification what is magnification the ratio of size of image to the size of object is called magnification it means i by o i is height of image o is height of object in terms of image distance object distance this magnification is v by u linear magnification or this magnification is always negative for real image if real image is form then it is for real image it is negative magnification and for virtual image on the same side of the mirror it is always as positive so these are about 
some reflection phenomena, mirror formula, magnification, but these are not in your syllabus. In your syllabus, first topic is refraction of light. What do you mean by refraction of light? Okay. Refraction of light is nothing but it is phenomenon of change in path of light or change in direction of light when it goes from one medium to another medium. Suppose this is one medium and this one is second medium, right? And this is the interface between the two medium. When light ray travels from one medium to another medium, it changes their path. This phenomenon of changing path of light is called refraction of light or you can say bending of light when it moves from passes from one medium to another. Why this bending of light change in path of light takes place? Because medium is changing, medium is changing means speed of light is also changing with respect to the medium and due to the change of speed of light in different medium this phenomena takes place. So the main cause of refraction of light is the speed of light is different in different media right now you must know about uh, rare medium and denser medium what do you mean by rare medium rare mediums in rare medium speed of light is more than in denser medium in rare medium density is less in denser medium density is more so suppose this first medium is rare medium right and the second one is denser medium it means in rare medium speed of light is more because density is less one more term refractive index is less in second one speed of light decreases because it is more dense than this one first medium it means density is more more density means speed decreases so when light travels from this rare to denser medium its speed decreases and bend towards the moon right when the light travels from this denser to rare medium denser is this one and rare is this one then its uh, density increases sorry density decreases from denser to rare medium so its uh, speed increases it always bends away from the normal so these two are important point when ray travels from rare to denser medium it bends towards the normal when ray travel from denser to rare medium it bends away from the normal now there are two laws of refraction first one is again this one is in, this is normal this is incident ray angle between normal and incident ray is called angle of incidence this one is refracted ray this is normal angle between refracted ray and normal is called angle of refraction so this incident ray refracted ray and normal at the point of incidence all lie in the same plane like laws of reflection second important law of refraction is the ratio of sign of angle of incidence the sign of angle of refraction is always constant it means sine by sine is a constant quantity and this constant quantity is called refractive index i will discuss after one and this second law of refraction is also called snell's law sin r by sin r is constant when it travels from one medium to another medium so this second medium has some density refractive index mu2 first medium has refractive index mu1 so when it travels from 1 to 2 you can write mu21 mu21 in this way also or mu2 by mu1 also so this is called snell's law now after this there are several daily life examples of refraction of light for example, you know a pencil always appears little bit bent than actually it is. The bottom of swimming pool always appears higher. Another one is uh, formation of rainbow after rainfall. All these are different applications of refraction of light. Now after this, I am going to discuss about this constant quantity. What is this constant quantity sin r by sin r equal to constant? This constant quantity is called refractive index. What is its meaning? What is this refractive index, right? It actually, uh, it measures how much light is bending when it travels from one medium to another medium. We know refraction means bending of light takes place when it travels from one medium to another medium. So, how much light is bending when it changes their medium, this is determined by a quantity that is called refractive index. And it is defined as ratio of sign of angle of incidence to the sign of angle of refraction. When light travels from one medium to another medium, so this first medium has refractive index, suppose the mu1, second medium has refractive index mu2. So this sign r by sign r equal to it refraction takes place from one medium to another medium. So mu2, it enters in second medium mu2 by 
mu 1 or you can write mu 2 1 also or you can write mu 2 1 also in any way you can write so this sin i by sin i right equal to mu 2 1 this is refractive index refractive index of medium 2 with respect to medium is also defined in terms of velocity of light suppose in medium 1 velocity of light is v1 in second wave velocity of light is v2 higher the density higher denser the medium lesser is the velocity it means velocity and refractive index are inversely proportional to each other if sin i by sin i equal to mu 2 by mu 1 so you can write mu 2 by mu 1 equal to v1 by v2 you can write this as mu 2 by mu 1 or mu 2 1 in this way also v1 by v2 in terms of velocity of light if one medium is air suppose first medium is air and in air velocity of light is what c so you can write in v1 in place of v1 you can write c and second medium suppose velocity is v you can write v so this is the refractive index of medium when one medium is air and this ion is called absolute refractive index when one medium is air so mu equal to c by v where c is velocity of light in rare medium and v is velocity of light in the denser medium another uh, medium so this mu is called refractive index of the medium mu equal to c by v refractive index of water is 4 by 3 it means 1.33 refractive index of glass is 3 by 2 it means 1.50 and maximum refractive index is of diamond that is 4.2 okay so these are all about refractive index then next important topic is total internal reflection what is this total internal reflection before this total internal reflection, we must know about critical angle okay suppose this is a denser medium and this one is rare medium when light travels from denser to rare you know it bends away from the normal but at one angle of incidence angle of refraction becomes 90 degree it means refracted ray is parallel to the surface so this angle of incidence at which angle of refraction becomes 90 degree is called critical angle the angle of incidence in denser medium for which angle of refraction in rare medium becomes 90 degree and this critical angle for diamond is 24 degree critical angle for glass is 42 water 48 in this way 55 and there is a formula for this refractive index of medium denser medium this is 1 by sin c right how you get this one okay first you know total internal reflection when light travels from denser to rare medium it always bends away from the normal like this one again when you increase angle of incidence after some time it becomes parallel to the surface the angle of refraction 90 degree and at the angle of incidence at which this angle of refraction 90 degree is called critical angle when angle of incidence is greater than this critical angle again increase angle of instance it means angle of instance greater than critical angle then light is totally refracted back in the same denser medium this is called total internal reflection when light ray traveling from denser to rare medium then at the interference at an angle of instance greater than critical angle this condition is very important light always travels from denser to rare medium angle angle of instance is greater than critical angle then light rays are totally refracted back into the Denser medium. This one is called total internal reflection, and this one is formula for refractive index of the medium mu equal to 1 by sin c. C is what? Critical angle. If you want to know the detailed expression of this formula mu equal to 1 by sin c, then you must go through one short revision which is available on my channel, and link is given in the description box. Okay. After this, uh, you know critical angle increases with temperature these are little uh, small small points which are very very important it increases with temperature the refractive index you know maximum for violet color and minimum for red color right this is very very important point refractive index is maximum for violet color minimum for red color and refractive index is maximum for violet color then its critical angle is lesser than red color critical angle and refractive index are inversely proportional to each other right mu equal to 1 by sin c so for violet color refractive index is more then for violet color refractive index is less than the this red color okay and this total internal reflection takes us only if light travels in a denser medium denser to rare medium angle of incidence is greater than critical angle now there are different applications of this total internal reflection 
but uh, I'm going to discuss only one important one, it is optical fiber that mirror, sparkling or diamond, all total refractive field, all these work on the piece for total ref internal reflection. I'm going to discuss only in detail about optical fiber. What is this optical fiber? Okay, these are used in telecommunication industries and it is based on the principle of total internal reflection. This optical fiber consists of one is core and another one is cladding. Right, so this core has always refractive index greater than cladding. This core is the inner part of the optical fiber and this cladding is outer part of this optical fiber. So this core has refractive index greater than the cladding. When light ray enters inside this optical fiber, it means it traverses a denser medium. And when denser to rare medium, when angle of incidence is greater than critical, then total internal reflection takes place. So in, in, this is core. And this is cladding and this outer surface is jacket. When light ray enters inside this core, it has higher diffractive index. It means it acts like a denser medium. And when light ray travels from denser to rare medium, internal total internal reflection takes place and in this way uh, communication takes place, right? So uh, there are different advantages of this one. These are small in size, light in weight. They, they have greater information carrying capacity than metallic wire. So this optical fiber works on the principle of this total internal reflection. Two or three points are written. It comes of core and cladding. This core has higher refractive index than cladding. The difference in refractive index, the signal is in the form of light directed from one end of the fiber. It undergoes repeated total internal reflection on the length of the fiber finally comes out at the other end. There is no appreciable loss in the intensity of light signal due to this total internal reflection. Okay. After this, next important topic I am going to start is about lens, then lens maker formula. Right. So, lens is a uniform transparent medium bounded between two, any two surface, either two surface has spherical or one is spherical or one plane surface. Depending upon the types of surface, lens may be of different types. But here we are going to discuss about only convex lens and concave lens. Convex lens, a lens which is thinner at edges and thicker at middle. This one. This lens is thicker at the middle and thinner at the edges. This type of lens are called convex lens. It is also called converging lens. Concave lens, this one. This is thinner at the middle and thicker at the edges. This is called concave lens or diverging lens. And the center of curvature of the lens is defined as center of that sphere of which this surface is a part. And radius of curvature is radius of curvature of that sphere of which this surface is a part. And also one more thing, this for this convex lens or converging lens, focal length is always positive. And this concave lens, focal length is always negative, right? Now in this lens, First important topic is refraction through a single surface. Lens is made up of two surfaces. Both surfaces may be spherical or one surface may be spherical or one may be plane. So how refraction takes place through a single surface? Suppose that mu1 and mu2 are refractive index of ray and denser mu. Suppose this is a single spherical surface, this one, right? And this one is the first medium and this side second medium. Mu1 is the refractive index of the first medium and mu2 is refractive index of this second medium. This first medium is rare and second medium is denser. Right. Now what happens if object is placed in this rare medium then light is incident at this point. This one is rare medium, this one is denser medium. When light goes from rare to denser medium in place of this one it bends towards the normal this is normal this is the center of curvature it bends towards the normal and image is formed at this point right from this position u is the object distance and the v is a image distance now when object is kept in rare medium and image is formed in denser medium it means when light moves from rare to denser medium the formula is this one mu2 by v minus mu1 by u equal to mu2 minus mu1 by r. r is the radius of curvature of this surface. So image is formed in second medium with refractive index mu2 so mu2 by v minus object is kept in dense rare medium whose refractive index is mu1 so mu1 by u equal to mu2 minus mu1 by r. It's very very important formula. 
but what happens when object is placed in denser medium and image is formed at rare medium it means when light travels from denser to rare medium you simply just replace mu1 by mu2 in this formula so mu2 is replaced by mu1 and mu1 is replaced by mu2 formula becomes mu1 by v minus mu2 by u equal to mu1 minus mu2 by r where u and v are object and image distance from the center of the and r is radius of curvature uh, mu1 by v means here image is formed in the when it travels from denser to rare medium image is formed in rare medium whose refractive index is mu1 so mu1 by v minus mu2 by u u is object distance object is kept in a denser medium whose refractive index is mu2 so mu2 by u equal to mu1 minus mu2 by r this is actually this video is only for quick revision so i'm not going to discuss how you get this formula for detailed explanation you must go through one shot revision of this chapter link is given in the description box right so you must revise these two formula when object in a rare medium formula is this one when object in denser medium formula is this one because these are very helpful when we derive lens maker formula so next important topic is refraction through a double thin convex lens that is lens maker formula how you derive this formula again for detailed explanation you must go through one shot revision of this chapter link is given in the description box suppose this is a double convex lens an object is kept at this point o right and this object forms image after refraction through this first surface x a y this is first refractive surface whose this image is formed at this position i1 now this i1 acts as a virtual object for this second surface x b y and final image is formed after refraction through this surface is at i right u is the distance of object from this optical center right this v1 is the distance of this first refraction image of this first surface v1 from the optical center and the final image is formed at i it is a distance v from the optical center r1 and r2 are radius of curvature of these two surfaces suppose refractive index of this surface is mu1 both sides and lens mu2 now you just write refraction through these two surface these two equation for this first surface what is the equation x a y surface equation is image is formed in denser medium object is a rare medium so equation is mu2 by v minus mu1 by u equal to mu2 minus mu1 by r1 for this second surface x b y here this acts as a virtual object so object is in denser medium image is formed in rare medium so you just replace mu2 by mu1 equation becomes mu1 by here sorry image is formed at v1 here mu1 by v minus mu2 by u equal to mu1 minus mu2 by r2 so you just write equation of these two surfaces and add these two equations you get lens maker formula this one 1 by f equal to mu2 minus mu1 by mu1 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 it's very very easy to derive this equation you must know these two equation how to write refraction of these two surfaces equation then you add these two you get this equation right and it is very very important for board exam if lens is surrounded by air it means mu1 is mu2 both this mu1 and mu1 is 1 so equation becomes 1 by f equal to mu minus 1 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 so these are about lens maker formula now next is combination of lens okay first is thin lens formula you already studied about this one in class 10 1 by f equal to 1 by v minus 1 by u u is object distance v is image distance and f is focal length now power of a lens next is power is what reciprocal of focal length when focal length is measured in meter p equal to 1 by this is power how power is nothing but how much it converts a diverge array right and its assigned it is diopter the power of a convex lens is positive and for concave lens it is negative now focal length of a combination of lens suppose there are two lens whose focal length are f1 and f2 these two lenses are combined together 
then the focal length of this combination of lens is what 1 by f equal to 1 by f1 plus 1 by f2 and power of this combination of lens is what p equal to p1 plus p2 how is this one suppose object is kept at this point so after diffraction through this first lens is its image is formed at suppose at this position i1 again this i1 acts as object for this second lens and whose final image is formed at this i right f1 and f2 are focal length of these two lenses so after calculating you get 1 by f equal to 1 by f1 plus 1 by f2 and power of first lens is p1 power of second lens is p2 so power of the combination of lenses p equal to p1 plus p2 again magnification magnification you know ratio of size of image to the size of object or you can write v by u for a number of lens magnification is always multiplied m equal to m1 into m2 into m3 so these are about power of lens and focal length of combination of lens after this next important topic is about prism this is a uniform transparent medium bonded between two refracting surface inclined at some angle these two are refracting surface and these two different surfaces it lands some angle this angle is called angle of prism actually it consists of two triangular bases like this one okay like these are done like this one and three rectangular lattice surface these surfaces are inclined each other at some angle that is called angle of prism now what happens here suppose this is the incident ray now refraction takes place at these two surfaces suppose at q and r these two surface refraction takes place and final ray emerges like this one so it this final emergent ray deviates from this original ray at some angle that is called this is the original incident ray and after refraction through this surface this is final emergent ray angle between this Incident ray and emergent ray is called angle of deviation. The angle subtended between direction of incident ray and emergent ray is called angle of deviation, right? And it is given by this formula delta equal to I plus E minus A. I is angle of incidence, this one. E is angle of emergence, this one emergent ray and normal. And this A is angle of prism. So this is the formula for angle of deviation, right? Again, by applying Snell's law, you get formula for refractive index of this prism. What is Snell's law? Snell's law is mu equal to sin i by sin r. Right now, now what is i? What is r? After calculating this one, you get mu equal to i becomes sin a plus delta m by 2 by r is a by 2 sin a by 2. When angle is very, very small, this sin theta tends to theta right so this refractive index mu becomes this one a plus delta m by 2 divided by a by 2 and after calculating this one you get the final formula for refractive index becomes mu equal to a plus delta m by 2 delta m is what angle of minimum deviation you can also write it as delta m equal to mu minus 1 a this formula are very very important right now so this is the refractive index of prism mu equal to a plus delta m by 2 and delta m equal to mu minus 1 by if you draw a graph with the angle of deviation and this angle of instance you get a graph like this one okay at one point you get angle of minimum deviation first when you increase the angle of instance angle of deviation decreases and at one point it becomes minimum after that when you again increase angle of instance angle of deviation increases so this is minimum angle of deviation at which angle of instance equal to angle of emergence i equal to e at angle of minimum deviation so these are about prism after this last important topic of this chapter is left that is optical instruments so now what are these optical instruments these are devices which makes use of mirrors lens prism and is used to extend range of vision with the help of these optical instruments, we can extend range of vision. It means with the help of these optical instruments, we always form image at least distance of distinct vision. What is this least distance of distinct vision? It is minimum distance for which <clears throat> we get clear image of the object, right? 
and it also increases visual angle and hence it increases magnification it means it, these optical instruments are used to increase visual angle visual angle is the angle formed by an object to the eye and it increases magnification suppose this is an structure of eye this one is eye lens and this is retina where image is formed now suppose object is kept at this position so where its image is formed after passing through the eye lens it forms image at this point this is the size of image which forms on the retina if you move the object away from the eye its image is formed at this position on the retina it means size of image decreases so as you move away from the eye size of image decreases and you are not able to see the clear image now if you move the object towards the eye then its size of image increases suppose object is at this position then it forms image at this position magnification is larger but after this suppose here this is d distance and again you move the object below this distance d now at this position it forms image its magnification is high but it forms blurred image you are not able to see the clear image so there is some least distance minimum distance from the eye up to which we get clear image of the object that least distance is called this distance of distinct vision and for human eye it is 25 cm so our aim is with the help of these optical instruments to form image at this least distance of distinct vision so that we can get clear and magnified image of the object and also increases visual angle visual angle suppose this is object so the angle formed by an object with the eye this angle is called visual angle so our aim is to increase visual angle so that we can get clear and magnified image of the object for there are different optical instruments which are used to form image at least distinct distinct vision also it is magnification first one is simple microscope then compound microscope astronomical telescope and reflective telescope i will discuss each microscope and telescope one by one so first i'm going to discuss about simple microscope what is this simple microscope simple microscope is used for observing magnified images of the object which are too small to be see by the naked eye right it consists of a single converging lens converging means convex lens that's why it is called simple because it consists of only a single convex lens of very small focal length micro means small so those small objects which are not able to see with the help of our naked eye we can see with the help of this simple microscope this consists of one this convex single convex lens of a small focal length now object is placed here between this focus formation by a convex lens Sup this one ray is incident parallel to the principal axis after passing through the lens it passes through the focus f right and the lens is passing through this optical center and it is passing as it is right so these two rays are moving away from refracted rays are moving away from each other so its final image is formed when you increase in the backward direction and final image is formed at this point a dash b dash now you can easily find the magnification of this simple microscope angular magnification is given by m equal to this beta by alpha what is this beta beta is this one this visual angle formed by the final image at d this is the final image and it is formed at this distance of distinct vision d so this beta is the visual angle formed by final image at d and alpha is what this one is the object so this is also object here so the angle formed by this object right kept at d to the i this is alpha so with uh, you can easily find the magnification of this simple microscope by calculating beta and alpha and after this you get magnification equal to what d by u not u not is the distance or you can write u also okay d by u distance of object from the eye now there are two cases maximum magnification is formed at d it means least distance of distinct vision and minimum magnification is formed at infinity so for maximum magnification you get this formula m equal to 1 plus d by f 
where d is least distance of distinct vision f is focal length of the lens how you get this formula actually you uh, find that m equal to d by u naught now you know thin lens formula 1 by f equal to 1 by v minus 1 by u after calculating this one and putting the value in this equation you get m equal to 1 plus d by f right so this is the maximum magnification formula and when the image is formed at infinite that is minimum magnification m becomes m equal to d by f so these are magnifying power for simple microscope for maximum magnification m equal to 1 plus d by f for minimum magnification m equal to d by f you must remember these two formula right after this with the help of this simple microscope magnif uh, magnification is only 9 times or 8 times but if you want large magnification then you have to use this compound microscope this compound microscope consists of two convex lens one is called objective and another one is called eyepiece separated by some distance this one is objective right and this one is eyepiece this objective is of a small focal length and eyepiece is of larger focal length now the object is kept close to the objective lens right now this objective forms magnified inverted image of this object here this is the image formed by this objective lens right and this inverted image acts as a virtual object for this eyepiece now this virtual object lies here between the focus this is the focus of the eyepiece and this is the optical center so between eyepiece and optical center so it acts like a simple microscope right so you must remember this point and if you have good knowledge of simple microscope you can easily find magnification of this compound microscope also so here first objective forms inverted and magnified image here right and this image acts as a virtual object for eyepiece and this is placed between this focals and optical center so it acts as a simple microscope now you can easily find the magnification with the help of you know magnification of two lenses is what magnification of eyepiece into magnification of objective now you know magnification of objective is what suppose this is the object distance u naught distance of object of this objective lens and this forms image at this point so suppose this is v naught so you know magnification of this objective is what magnification of objective is v naught by u naught now magnification of this compound microscope you know d by u e so here magnification of this is eyepiece now total magnification is what this one so you get v naught by u naught into d by u now here also there are two cases when the final image is formed at least distance of distance with it is case for maximum magnification right so here d by u is replaced by 1 plus d by f naught already discussed in simpler microscope so magnification formula becomes m equal to v naught by u naught 1 plus d by f naught where f naught is the focal length of the objective right now this one when final image is formed at infinity when final image is formed at infinity in that case this is d by f e so f equal to v naught by u naught d by sorry here focal length of eyepiece so this is when the final image is formed at infinity that is means minimum magnification right hope it's clear to all of you right so you must remember these two formula also magnification for maximum magnification magnifying power for minimum magnification right now after this next important optical instrument is astronomical telescope there are two types of telescope one is astronomical and the one is refracting telescope so this is refracting type telescope or you can say astronomical telescope right what is this astronomical telescope actually microscope is used to form magnified image of the object but this is of heavenly bodies like stars planets those bodies which are at very larger distance from us like this star sun moon so this telescope is used to form 
images of this heavenly bodies at the nearby position. It also consists of two lens, one is called objective, another one is called IP separated by some distance. Now, here also magnification is what? Magnification of objective into magnification of eyepiece. Now, here this objective is of larger focal. You must remember this point in tele microscope. This objective is of a smaller focal length, but here this objective is of larger focal length and this eyepiece is of a smaller focal length. Why it is uh, this objective is of larger focal length? So that to collect more light because object is kept at infinity, very large distance. So, large amount of light passes through this objective. So, that is why it is of larger focal length and this eyepiece is of smaller focal length. Right? Now, uh, rays are coming like this one from the far distance of right now its final image this objective forms image at this position again between focus and optical center so this eyepiece acts as simple microscope and it forms final image like this one so here also magnification is given by magnification objective into magnification of eyepiece now there are two cases again for maximum magnification it means image is formed at least distance of distinct vision in that case Magnification is given by m equal to f naught by f e 1 plus f e by d. You must remember this one where f naught and f e are focal length of eyepiece and objective. And this length of the telescope is also given by l equal to f naught plus u e where u is distance of object from the eyepiece. Now for minimum magnification it means when image is formed at infinity in that case m is given by m equal to f naught by f e right and here this length of the telescope is f naught plus f e this is the length of the telescope distance between this objective and eyepiece so it is f naught plus f e right so in this way uh, we can form image of distant objects at this distant distant vision with the help of this astronomical telescope but there are some drawbacks of this astronomical telescope what are those drawbacks it actually here uh, objective is of larger focal length, so its size is very large. So it's not very easy to handle this astronomical telescope. Also, it suffers from spherical and chromatic aberration. So uh, and also it is very costly. Also, so all these are disadvantage of this astronomical telescope. It is not easy to handle due to its larger size because object is of large focal length. It suffers from spherical and chromatic aberration and also it is very costly. So, this objective lens is replaced by a mirror. Why it is replaced by a mirror? Because this, this larger focal length, its size is very large, it is very costly, it suffers from spherical and chromatic aberration. This mirror is free from chromatic and spherical aberration. It is easy to handle. It is also very cheap. So, this astronomical telescope is replaced by a reflecting type telescope. Right? This reflecting type telescope has some advantage over this astronomical telescope. It is free from a spherical aberration, chromatic aberration. Its size is very small. It is very easy to handle. It is also very cheap. Here, objective is replaced by this two mirror. These two mirrors. One mirror is this parabolic mirror is concave mirror. And this secondary mirror is convex mirror. Due to this mirror, it is free from spherical chromatic aberration. Now, rays, parallel rays are coming from distant object. It falls on this con parabolic concave mirror and it is reflected and it again reflected rays falls on this secondary mirror. Again, it is reflected back and enters into the eyepiece of the reflecting telescope. In this way, final image is formed of the larger dist uh, far away distance, right? So, this, there are some advantages of this reflecting telescope over this astronomical telescope. That's why it is used. Now, you must remember the magnification formula for this one. For maximum magnification, it means image is formed at D. It means maximum magnification. Magnification formula is F naught by F E 1 plus F E by D. Right. And for minimum magnification, it means image is formed at infinity. Magnification is given by F naught by F E. So, these are about different types of uh, astro 
so these are about different types of microscope and telescopes right hope is clear to all of you so with this i am going to end my class hope you like this one shot series if you liked it then don't forget to subscribe my channel okay students keep revising and stay tuned with this channel thank you